Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game on the tabletop is a unique deck builder called Heliox, The Last Sunset, as well as the deluxe version of the game, which includes Mercury Protocol and additional cards. In Heliox, you play a two to four player game. It takes about 45 minutes to about an hour and a half, depending on how many players, as well as about ages probably 13 and up. In the game, you're going to be getting a commander or a leader that is uh, located on one of the cards, and there's tons to choose from as well as a carrier space and a deck. In your deck you're going to get material assets as well as sentinel prototypes. You can need three sentinel prototypes as well as five material assets. And you're also going to get to choose between faction cards. These faction cards are listed, are, are, there's a couple of them. Uh, there's two of each different type, up to four, up to four players. Uh, they're going to have little symbols in the upper left hand corner that will refer to them as being starter cards, they're a little dot. You'll pick two of them from the same set and put it into your deck of cards, just like this. And you're going to shuffle it and that will begin your deck. Then you're going to be going around the galaxy collecting different pieces of equipment as well as different items from the market deck. You're going to be building embassies, working with other players or against other players. And there's tons of different variants in the game. There's a cooperative variant in the game, a solo player game, as well as the competitive mode. As you go through uh, and deal with a bunch of events that happen, as well as catastrophic events, you're going to be trying to gain as much influence as possible, which is the currency required to win the game. At the end of the game, whoever has the most influence in the competitive version of the game will be the winner. Alright, let me go ahead and show you how the game's set up for the cooperative variant, as well as the competitive variant, and all the other ones. Alright guys, so here we have set up a two-player game of Helianox, along with all the deluxe edition stuff and expansion stuff. I'll go ahead and talk about everything involved. First of all, they talk about locations. These are the five different locations, and each have a different symbol representing the location. On the mat itself, if you decide to get that, it will tell you the symbol type, so it's easy to di differentiate between the different locations. Also, there is the expanded uh, locations here, as well as the basic locations in the base game. You can use either one, it doesn't matter. We'll be using the expanded ones for this explanation. Set these aside. Also, you're going to have illegal tech. Depending on the number of players in the game, is going to be how many illegal tech you have. In a two-player or one-player game, the single variant, you're going to have one illegal tech of each type. In a three- and four-player, you're going to have two of each type when it comes with two. You also over here have shutdown tokens, which represent a location being shut down and where you can't use its ability or its key ability here. You also are going to have your spaceship tokens, and they're different colors, so you can play with up to four players, provided you get uh, two sets of the game. So as you can see here, you have the red on both sides and the green on both sides. So there's also the blue as well as the black variant right over here, so you can have an additional couple players. All right, over here we have different decks in the market. This right here is the defense. This over here is the bio deck. This one over here is the cybernetic deck. Over here is transport, and these are prime assets. Uh, over here is these. These are actually shipping tokens. They all represent different colors on the map, and where you can pick them up from, and how you can deliver them, which we'll talk about later. Over here you have infamy, which is the same thing as um, this is a negative point value you can obtain while you're playing through the game, so you can lose points. Uh, these are the shop tokens or market tokens you can acquire while dropping off supplies. This is the event decks, all three of them. You can always, if you don't have this mat here, you can put them all on top of each other if you'd like. Or you can set them in just like this. And now we'll talk about down over here, which you're going to have your player decks. Like I was talking about previously, there's ten cards. You start with two um, of the special cards along with material assets and the sentinel prototypes. And that will make up a deck of 10 cards. Remember, don't forget that there's there's dots here on the location on the cards that represent starting cards. It's important to remember that. Uh, this is the carrier fleet asset, which comes in the expansion or expanded content. It lets you place uh, market tokens as well as these things over here, these little uh, shipping containers. This is your architect, which has a name as well as abilities, and then the architect tokens over here, which get placed on your architect whenever you use the abilities. These over here are your embassies, which you can place on locations to represent the fact that you have an embassy on those locations. And the same for the other second player. The last thing I'm going to talk about over here is you've got a big bunch of credits. This is the money used in the game to buy stuff. That and here's is the incorrect. Representation over here, what the money looks like. Um, you also have the request cards. Request cards are like this, and you get seven per player. In a two-player game, you get 14. And they're basically going to ask you to go from one location and gather that specific resource or trade currency and move it to a different location, the blue area, send it there, and then you get this, and it gives you a bonus of points. 
Um, also, you have cooperative mission cards, one for each player, and in the cooperative variant of the game, you'll need to complete both of these in order to win the game. These are bonus special missions you can choose to, to do to complete um, and get additional um, points throughout the game. Sorry, let me go ahead and... There, th this is actually not currency in the game. This is actually what you need to win the game. This is the uh, points total you need to win um, throughout the game. The currency is actually going to be found on your cards. Uh, and finally, it comes with a standard guide symbol, card symbols, on both front and back, as well as providing you with a quick reference and a turn reference. That is the entire game and what's included. Okay, so like I was saying with my goof up before, this is influence, these little green things, and we use them for the end of the game. If you have the most of these, you win the game. The credits are actually found on your cards here, which says right here, gain one credit. And what happens is these credits will go away at the end of your turn if you don't use them. Other than the market credits or the market supply tokens, which will actually give you two credits, and you can use them whenever you want. Well, I'll talk about more of that later. Let me talk to you about the turn sequence of events. The first thing that's going to happen is you're going to grab an event from the event deck on the far left-hand side and move it over onto the field, and then you're going to do your turn. And on your turn, you can move, you can buy stuff, you're going to draw five cards from the deck, and you can use any of the credits or defense or any of the special cards in any way, just like a normal deck builder would. And you can spend credits to do things like move or build an embassy or buy cards from the market deck. And after you do all that, your turn is over and it proceeds to the next player's turn. Also to note is at the beginning of your turn, your character has these little uh, tokens represented on it. If you use its ability down here, which I'll explain when we talk about the turns, uh, one of those gets removed every turn at the beginning of their turn. And you're going to go back and forth revealing new events and trying to defeat them and so on and so forth until the end of the game when the last event has been revealed. Alright, let me go ahead and show you a couple turns of the game. Okay, so the game's ready to begin for the first turn of play. Each player has shuffled their decks and they got all their tokens set up. But we can also add is special missions. Special missions are easy. All we do is include them by flipping them off face up and everybody has the option to complete them. Uh, and so people can see them throughout the entire game. Now this one says overcome five stellar events and five social events, and you gain five influence if you're able to do that at the end of the game. More than one player can do that, obviously. At the end of the game, with seven, end the game with seven cybernetic operatives in your deck. Or end the game with one material aspect set in your deck. Or end the game with five embassies and gain five. So these can be left up uh, face up throughout the game. People can go ahead and look at them so they can obtain more influence as they go. Also, in a cooperative mission, which we're not going to be, we'll talk about a little bit later, we're not going to be playing currently, uh, you could add these cards that are involved in actually having to complete these at the end of the game in order to win, as well as defeating a shadow operative, which is also in play, who's fighting against you. The request deck is seven for each player, and in this game it's a two-player game, so there's 14 of these cards, and each person is going to get one, uh, and you can face down. And they basically say, gather a supply from here and take it to here. And when they do that, they will complete this objective and they'll score it and they'll draw a new request. So we'll just go ahead and give one of these things to each player and set the rest aside. Okay, so the game's ready to begin. We have this nice little handy dandy turn sequence that indicates how the phases go, as well as the token guide that shows all the different tokens in the game and what they do and what they mean, as well as a quick reference sheet, which is nice. Okay, so let's go and talk about the event phase. First, we remove any cryo counters, which are these little guys here, from any of these guys. And you can actually remove cryo tokens, or place cryo tokens on your turn, I should say, and gain the abilities. This one says gain a cargo if able, and this one says draw a card and move to any location. So if I wanted to, I could pay two and gain a little cargo if able. So I am currently with green, I am at this location, Old World, which is Earth, and I can gain this green cargo and I would place it on the carrier fleet. Then, after that, I will go ahead and do an event. So flip any inactive event, which is the far left one, and then we go right after all this deck finishes, and this deck, and this deck, and we'll just put it down next to the location that is the same symbol. All right, we did that. Next, we go to the main phase, and in any order, you can do all these different things. You can play cards from your hand. So as this player's turn, he's going to start with five cards in his hand. And in the hand, it's all the basic stuff, right, as any other deck builder. You've got gain one currency, gain one credit, gain one credit, gain a shield, gain a shield. And this is gain one or gain two credit if you control two or more embassies. So it would just be one for right now. So you have three money, two shields. Well, we want to defeat this. So we can go ahead and do that by spending money. So we'll spend two money. We'll just go ahead and put our discard pile. And then that will take us anywhere around the board. We can spend one to move to any embassy we control or two to move anywhere on the board. So boop, there we go. We move there. 
And then to defeat this, we need to actually have the amount equal to the defense. So we'll spend two more, and that would defeat this. If this was actually going to be in play on the next turn, it would just flip over, and there would be another a secondary way to defeat it as well. But we completed it, so it just goes over here, and it counts towards our victory total of two influence at the end of the game. We have this one left over. We can gain one, but there's nothing really we can do. We can look over here. It says we can move to any location with an embassy. We'll play an embassy for two, so this is not really useful. So we'll end up discarding this. Now, other things we can do, so we pay to move locations, placing embassies, overcoming events, we did that. Use your architect ability, ability we did that. Use one location bonus or key access, so we could do that. Let's see what we have here. So we don't have the key access because there was no embassy here of ours. If we had enough money to pay two to put an embassy down, we could do that. But we don't, so we're going to see all players remove one cryo counter. Oh, okay, we'll do that. Only I have a cryo counter, so that goes away and that helps us out. Anything else we can do? We can cycle a card in the market. Cycling a card, simply removing at least a card and putting, taking the next one down. I think it's just like that. And that's pretty much all we can do. Finally, at the end phase, we discard all the extra cards we had in our hand, which was this one here. Or we could choose to keep it, which I'm not going to. And then we draw up to five cards. One, two, three, four, five. We look at those cards, lots of money. And after that, the next player's turn begins. All right, so what does red want to do? Well, first of all, let's get rid of cryo counters. Okay, we can't do that. Let's put a new event up. Here we go. We'll put on the purple location right there. Next, uh, play any cards we ha have in our hand. So let's go ahead and draw our hand to five, which you could do this at the beginning of turn if you would like. It just makes it easier for me not to. All right, so we got three monies, one defense. So we're not going to be defeating this thing, I don't think and gain two credits. These credits can only be used to obtain um, operatives. And you can see down here where well, they say operative, cybernetic operative, transport operative, and these guys aren't. So we could buy these things here. So we have one, two, three, and four, five. So we're just gonna actually buy, buy an operative from the deck here, because I think that's the most beneficial thing we can do. So we'll spend our five currency, and this one right here, uh, interworld diplomat. Gain three influence. Each opponent who controls an embassy at your location gains two. So this card will go on top of our deck. So instead of like most uh, deck builders that would go into the discard pile, it's just gonna go on top of our deck, just like that. And there's nothing else we can do with this one defense, so we don't really need it. Do we wanna use the location? We could, it just lets us gain one credit. Um, so we can do that. We can't use it, we can't spend it, so it doesn't matter. And we can't move, we got no money to move, we can't place embassies, blah, 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 blah. So we're gonna end our turn, and it's next player's turn. Last thing I wanna show you as well is that these cards get flipped over um, at the beginning of a turn, after you remove a cryo counter, these would get flipped over, and they have different symbols that represent different things, and you can look up on the symbol chart to see what they all do. Um, some of them represent tr uh, credits, and other ones let you do eh, just different things here. Uh, it says cargo, raid, sometimes a raid can happen, lose one cargo if this event becomes active on your location. So it just depends on what it is. You have to look through, there's a whole bunch of them, so you have to look through yourself. But that is the basic way to play the game. Let me tell you a little bit all about all the bonus content that comes in the game, as well as all the cooperative mission variants. Okay, so the Deluxe Edition has a bunch of extra stuff, as well as this expansion. So we have the Last Sunset here, but we also have Mercury Protocol as well, included along with a bunch of extra stuff. There's a bunch of, bunch of new guys here, a bunch of architects that are included, and they have different backs, but it really doesn't matter, right? Uh, they probably might be, this is a prototype, so who knows what's gonna be gonna happen. But it also comes with stuff like market tokens. Market tokens, like I was talking to you before about, you can get these by actually doing cargo runs. So cargo runs are pretty simple. You go to a location, you spend a credit, and then you get a cargo from that location. And then you can't actually use that, you can't return that cargo to the same location, but you can go return it to any other location. On your turn, you can get up to five cargos, but they all have to be different colors. And of course you can drop them off, provided you're, that you don't drop them off to the same location in which you got them. If you do that, you're able to obtain different things. For instance, you could obtain, whenever you drop in a, a cargo off at a certain location, if that location has illegal tech, you can gain that and put it on top of your deck just like a normal card. The difference with illegal tech is that you're gonna get infamy at the end of the game. And, this, and every illegal tech gives you three infamy loss, which is negative three points, as well as whenever you play it, you're also gonna suffer, suffer infamy. Now you can't take illegal tech if there's not any, any there, but you can as long as there is some. And in one player to two player game, it's one illegal tech per location and three to four, it's two. Also, if you don't want to get illegal tech because it is debilitating, but they're really good. You could also do uh, the market cards, or market tokens. These guys give you two credits and you can save them. So normally credits will go away at the end of your, at the end of the round after you're done playing them or if you've, chosen to save them in your hand, you could do that. 
But these guys actually go from turn to turn, and they're left on your carrier space, which is actually another really nice addition to the game. This carrier space holds onto your cargo, as well as holding on to your market tokens. And market tokens are used to buy stuff from the market. That's where you're going to spend the market tokens. You can't use it to buy anywhere else. Also to talk about um, is request cards. So these guys here, which I discussed before, this is, has to do with uh, taking cargo from one location to another. And when you do that, you get the bonus for getting either the illegal tech, as well as you get the bonus for the card itself, which can give you influence, which is points at the end of the game, which is really, really nice. Next, we'll talk about the cooperation mode. All right, give me a second here. This is a lot to talk about. So, on the cooperation mode, it's very similar to the start of the base game, but there's a new player added, and he's a bad guy. And also, just like in a normal round, you'd be drawing the events, right? One per turn. Instead, the first turn, you draw your one event, but every other turn, you're going to be drawing two events. Also, the deck, the uh, equipment, the uh, sorry, the event deck will be set up in a different way. So, you have to look at the chart for that. It depends on the number of players. But for the cooperative mode, there's a different way to set up the event deck, as well as the catastrophic events. So you're going to go along and be placing two events down every single turn, and you're going to be doing your turn just like you normally would. However, the Shadow Syndicate, after you've done draw up, drawing up to your hand, so you're going to draw, if you have one card, you draw up to five, uh, draw up five cards, and then you have to discard one and have your hand to five. After you're done doing that, then you're going to have the Shadow Operative do his thing. The first thing he does is he goes and looks for any events that are on the board, and he takes the most highest influence active event, and if, there's none, if there are no active events, they'll take the highest inactive active event. And he'll count that towards his scoring for influence, as well as the highest influence slash costing market card. So for instance, this market card here has two uh, influence on it and a four cost. If two is the highest influence, we take it. If there's a tie, we go for cost. And if there's ever any ties involved in deciding this stuff, like double ties, then you just go ahead and choose for yourself. So the evil bad guy is also going to get bonuses for requests. If you have any requests left over that you didn't actually complete, then he's going to get all of the rest of them and count it towards his influence, as well as any illegal tech. So he's going to get bonus points for illegal tech, the requests, all the market cards he has stolen, and all the events he completed for you. And you're going to, he's going to add up that total. And if you have more influence than him, you win, provided you beat the cooperative missions, and you get additional cooperative missions per the amount of players you have. This one says you have to end the game with six operatives per player, and this one says you have to end the game with five consumed cards per player. So these are necess necessarily this, these are required in order for you to beat the game with a cooperative variant, along with having more influence than the bad guy. There's also a solo variant in the game as well, which is played very similarly to the cooperative variants with a couple of slight rules adjustments. But that's basically how you play the game Heliox. All right, well, let me go ahead and tell you what I think of it. Okay, so Heliox, the deluxe edition. Well, first of all, when I got the game, it, got, it came included with both uh, two sets of the base game plus the deluxe edition, so I could play with four players and the deluxe edition. And the game itself, we played the base game first because there's a lot of stuff in this game, and that game was really good. The addition of all this extra content really works as well. I enjoyed the entire thing put together. After we played the first game once, I was able to include all this stuff and it made sense. It was very easy to understand this different stuff. The cargo was very easy to understand. You can collect it from a certain location thematically and return it to a new location. It works. Perfect. You also have the infamy, which is included with the illegal tech. So whenever you play certain cards, like you play a card, you get an infamy, it goes next to you. That way you can keep track of your infamy that you've gained, as well as whenever you play these illegal tech cards. I like the illegal tech cards too, because it just gives you an option. You don't even have to include it if you don't want. But if you do want, you can take it, and that gives you something really good. Um, three credits for one card. Really nice. Really easy to get them too, at the cost of infamy though. So it's, do you want that extra money? in turn for suffering the cost of losing points at the end of the game. The cooperative cards. These guys are really fun too. I really enjoyed the cooperative game. I like the aspect of cooperating with your with your friends, who are used to be your opponents, to make sure that you're able to stop the evil bad guy who's stealing tons of great stuff from the deck, as well as the best events, and also making you suffer if you don't complete the required requests, as well as taking those uh, the illegal assets or the illegal tech here. So if you want to take this illegal tech, it's going to cost you negative points. But if you leave it there, it's going to cost you negative points too. So no matter what, you're losing points via these guys. The competitive game works really well as to include with all this included. The market cards are a great addition. They let you choose something other than the, other than the tech, and they let you increase your deck size by holding those cards, uh, the, the tokens. You can then select the cards you want when they come up as they come up.
They've also included a lot of different uh, unique characters and stuff like that that also represent different stuff involving like the shipping and stuff like that. So for this one here, it's gain a cargo if able. Obviously, that's not going to be in the base game because there's no cargo there. Um, obtain this one here is obtain one free shield card for four, which is really nice too. Or discard three cards and gain five shield. Very, very powerful, but a long time to determine if you want to do that. The abilities on the architects are awesome, but it's almost better sometimes to have, I think, one with a single ability that's really cheap and one with a big ability. So you can determine, maybe this turn's not the right turn for me to use the big ability. What if you pick two, uh, two abilities on one character that are really good and you use them, you're, you're, at, you're down for the count for a while. Request cards are fun. The deck building is fun. I like putting the card I just gained on top of the deck so that I can feel like I get to use it next turn. It's like buying, most deck builders are like buying a candy bar and then that candy bar has to go into the fridge and you have to wait until next week before you can eat it. In this game, you buy the candy bar and you get to eat it right away, which is really nice. I like that aspect. I also like feeling like I can travel around the galaxy by spending credits, the embassies and stuff like that work, as well as the cooperative nature in even a competitive game when you're fighting these harder to beat catastrophic events that do a bunch of crazy stuff. Um, let me see if I can find a catastrophic event here. These things are nasty. This one, all players do not control an embassy. All players that do not contain, control an embassy gain two infamy. While active, all locations are shut down. And you don't want that because when locations are shut down, you can't do any of the actions on the location, which is a nice bonus freebie. Other than uh, in the base game, you can do one of the locations, but I don't think so in this one. Um, yeah, but you have to want to cooperate sometimes and decide when it's best to cooperate and when it's best to just let locations fail because you know that that's going to be more beneficial for some other player. So, I mean, tons of positives. Uh, I love the style of the game. I love the artwork. I love the theme. I feel like the theme really, really works. And you can just see the, like the sun. To me, it's like the sun is exploding. And you're trying to do everything you can in this like futuristic setting before the sun just goes out of control. It's almost, why would you bother? Because life is kind of meaningless at that point. But whatever, it still works. Um, the negative things in the game is that it's long. And it's difficult to teach. So you have to be prepared to gather all the rules and sit down with certain people that are going to be more strategic minded. Um, this is a heavier deck builder than what I'm used to. But in that setting, in that case, you're going to, have to pick your friends for when you want to play this game. And it's not like, you know, you can't play with 10 year olds and that kind of stuff. And certain people are just going to be like, this is too much thought for me. But if you're strategically minded, if you like games with a lot of theme and a lot of options and a heavy deck builder that has tons of different things you can do is not just building your deck, but also fighting and moving and trading and all this other stuff, this is definitely going to be the game for you. I definitely suggest you check out Heliox, the Deluxe Edition, currently on Kickstarter. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game card game review. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, go ahead and check out the rest of our content here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, comment, subscribe, please. Also, if you like Heliox, the base game, you should definitely get this deluxe edition. It's only for the people that have never heard of the game before that will have to make their minds up. I think if you liked Heliox, the first game, this is a must-have. You can enjoy all the extra stuff in it. Tons of cool art, tons of characters, tons of additional content. Check it out. Uh, description below. Also, go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, Kickstarter lists, giveaways, all that good stuff. Big Kickstarter list shows you all the newest games on a Kickstarter right now. You should definitely take a look. Also, our affiliates. Check out everythingboardgames.com, The Giveaway Geek, and Devatoast Gaming. They've got a bunch of good content and tons of giveaways as well. All right, guys, that's it for this one, and look forward to seeing you next time. I'll talk a little bit about the deck building aspect of the game. Here you have all the different deck sizes, sets and types. You've got the bio deck and the cybernetic deck, the defense deck. Over here is transport, and these are the prime assets. This entire thing is just prime assets. It gives you two currency. Whenever you buy cards, you put them on top of your deck, like I was saying. So if you were to buy a prime asset for two, it would give you two the next time you played it. Over here, look at the transport deck a little bit. This one says secure a card from your deck or discard pile, which is really nice. This one over here is draw two cards. This one is you may move to any location, gain two influence, and all players may move to an adjacent location. So at the cost of getting influence, you could also, or the cost of gaining influence, your players or opponents get to move to different locations. However, in the cooperative game, this is awesome. Draw two cards again. You gain two uh, credits, you may move to any location, then all players may move to your location. Draw a card and gain key access if able. Look at this artwork, such a great artwork on here. All right, here's a lot of the operatives in here. So we've got gain one influence and your opponents lose one. That's really good to play. These are fun. 
Uh, move to another player's location or move to a player of your uh, to a player of your on your location. Move to another player's location or move a player to your location and then gain two influence. Gain two influence. All players may secure an operative from your deck or discard pile. Okay, gain two. All players may secure an operative, so same one. Yeah, tons of tons of cool stuff in here as well. Gain two, gain key access of Abel. Wonderful art. Alright, let's look at the defense. So this is where we're going to be needing to secure our events to stop the events from happening. Gain two defense, draw a card, discard a card. Gain a defense, gain key access. Gain two defense. Uh, obtain one operative from the market. Just pick one off. That's awesome. When you play this card, you just get an operative. Gain two defense or gain two credits. This is super good for four. But the thing is, really good cards like this don't give you a lot of influence at the end of the game. Because you're going to be tallying up these points at the end of the game, all of your influence, and whoever has the most is the winner. Gain two defense, all operatives gain a card. So as you can see, a lot of these cards, or almost all of them, have no influence at all. But they give you a lot of these defense, which will kill these cards over here, which will in turn give you, def give you influence. So it's kind of a, you know, buy these cards to get rid of those cards kind of thing. Yeah, it's really cool. All the different stuff from all the new expanded content over here. This one is the bio deck. Was it secure a prime asset? Consume this card or consume two cards from your hand. Consuming is just getting rid of a card from your deck or moving it from play. Draw a card. All players may consume a card from their hand or discard pile. So that's nice. It gives you a lot of points too. Consume this card or consume two cards from your hand or your discard a card to draw a card. So yeah, look at this. But I just want to go ahead and show you a bunch of the different artwork and a bunch of the different cards involved in the game and how they work when you're building your deck. 